Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna do one of my favorite types of fishing, and that is ultralight fishing for whatever wants to bite. I got my ultralight rod, some small jig heads, and some one inch gulp minnows, and I'm gonna beat the banks and just catch whatever wants to eat those gulp minnows. It is a fun way to fish. You catch a ton of fish and everything pulls hard on the ultralight. So I've kind of worked my way down this shoreline here. I've got a live scope on my kayak, but honestly, I don't really need it for what I'm doing today because on my way down through here, I was just kind of standing up in the kayak and looking for fish. We're on into spring now. There's a lot of fish that are up in the shallows and in this clear water where I'm fishing out here today, the water's really clear. You can just kind of visually see fish up there. You can see bait fish, bluegill, things like that. and that's a great way, a great way to find fish, figure out where you need to be casting if you don't have a live scope or electronics on your boat or kayak or whatever you're using. Just move along, use your eyes. These are the original fish finders right here. So I've done that, I've spotted some fish and I'm gonna start casting to them and it's gonna be a fun day. There's gonna be a lot of fish caught in this video. Stay tuned. Let's just make some cast over here and see if we can get bit right away. They say it is bad luck to get bit on the first cast, but I don't think there's ever an unlucky time to catch a fish. I got one too, by gosh. Look right here. Oh, that's a bass too. Tighten up my drag just a smidge. First cast, watch him come up and jump. <laughs> yes, sir. Old small jaw on the gulp mina. One inch gulp. I'm gonna let him tire himself out here just a minute. Cause I got two pound line and I don't wanna, I don't wanna try to boat lift him and him go to shaking on me and break that jig off. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here. Right, oh. Let me just get you like that, maybe. Look at that, y'all. Nice. That's what he eat. One inch gulp. We got us a little smallmouth bass. Old small jaw. Pretty fish. And you talk about a fun time on an ultralight, even a fish this size, which is probably. Uh, heck, I got my board with me. He ain't worth measuring, but we'll go ahead and throw him on here anyway. He's probably, yeah, 13, 13 and a half inch smallmouth. But that fish right there is a dang good time on this setup. And I'll just kind of show you again here in case you're new to my channel or haven't seen my ultralight videos before. This is my favorite ultralight bait, and I've been using this setup for years. So this is a one inch gulp minnow in the smelt color. That is a 1 64th ounce jig head that has a number eight hook. I get those on eBay, just from whoever's selling at the cheapest at the time I need to buy. My ultralight rod is a St. Croix Panfish Series rod, six foot long, ultralight action, small Abu Garcia reel, it's a 1000 series reel, and then two pound test trout magnet SOS line. Simple setup catches everything from bluegill to bass and everything in between. They'll all eat this jig and gulp. And again, fish like that, man, they'll double this rod over and pull some drag. And that's the first fish on the first cast. I think that's pretty good luck, y'all. I don't care. I don't care what the old wives tale is. I'll take it. May not get a fish on the second cast, but by gosh, we got one. We're off to a good start. Oh, something hit me. Oh, he's running with it too, man. He's running with it. Here he comes. I gotta tighten my drag a smidge. I don't know what he is yet, but he took off just a hitting and getting it. Is that another bass? No, that's a big bluegill right there. That's a nice bluegill right there. He just going, man, look at him. He's fired up. These fish, water temps here, warming up. It's surface temps over 70 degrees. Now it's a 80 degree day out here. You know, we're into to May. Oh, he's peeing all over me. I, do you see that? 
He was, oh, every time I go squeeze him, he's peeing toward me. Doggone fish. He's still peeing. Lordy days. Tie a knot in it, fish. <laughs> Listen, bluegill, you a nice bluegill. Show yourself off there to the audience. Now you're going in the bucket, doggone it. After you've peed all over me. Oh, oh, boy, I about lost him. Y'all, that fish pee peed all over me. Look at this. He got me. He got me right in the crotch. He looks like I peed on myself. Got all down my leg and everything there. Lordy days, man. These fish, I'm telling you, they got no morals, no respect. They'll just whip it out in front of anybody, camera rolling, and just whiz all over you. That's what happened to me, but I stuck him in the bucket there. I'm gonna keep a few bluegill today, maybe some yellow bass too if I get on some of them for an upcoming catfish trip. I'm gonna try to feed that thing to a flathead. So uh, he's going in the bucket definitely since he tinkled on me, but I'm gonna make some more casts here and see if I can get some more. I got another one. I didn't feel him hit. I went to pick up on the line and there he was. That's another hard pulling one too. I hope this one keeps it in his pants. Hopefully he peed before he, before he bit the, the lure here. It's another good size gill that's going in the bucket. Bluegill this size will give you everything you want on an ultralight setup. What do you think, Bluegill? Hey, tell them people watching at home to hit the like and subscribe button. Would you do that for me, Fish? He says he ain't doing nothing for me. He says he's been falsely imprisoned here in that bucket, and he ain't saying nothing until his lawyer shows up. I don't blame him. I may get repositioned here. The wind's going to blow me up on this bank right there where I was catching them. Oh, I got another one. I went to pick up on it, and there he is, man. There's a bunch of fish right here. That's another, it's hard pulling gill, man. This one's got some colors on him too. He's, he's orange. Nice looking gill, man. Let's see if I can boat lift this one. What do you think about bluegill? You wanna, you wanna go be introduced to a flathead? He says, heck no. He got something on his lip there. He's been, this fish y'all, he's been kissing on the wrong woman. She's, she's giving something there. You gotta be careful, fish. There's dirty women everywhere now. That ain't just true in the fishing world. That's a life lesson for all of you out there watching. As a former ER nurse, before this whole YouTube thing took off, I can tell you firsthand, there's some dirty people out there in this world. That fish right there, unfortunately, he's a victim of it. Come on. See if I can introduce him to a flathead, though, who's maybe willing to overlook his, his flaws. Let's see if I can cast some more over here, too. I ain't made much progress here, y'all. I'm still just, just working very slowly here and casting this jig, and they just, as it sinks down, they're snatching it. The wind's blowing just enough to kind of kind of get a bow in the line at times when it gusts and it and it's making it hard to feel those lighter bites so like that fish there i just i went to pick up on it and there he was i didn't feel the bite i didn't didn't see the line twitch or anything you kind of have to be a line watcher when you're doing this ultralight fishing because sometimes fish bite real light and sometimes you get you know like that right there. i don't know if you can see that on camera the wind's blowing just a slight bow in the line and it can be just enough to prevent you from feeling those bites. I got hit. I felt that and by gosh, it just went pop. And we off to the races here. I don't know what this is, this may be another bluegill possibly, but if he is, he's a, he's a heck of a fight. These are some nice quality bluegill here today. They're, they're obviously that one, you know, peeing all over me, they're getting ready to spawn. On this one here, man, look at that, man. That is a thick bluegill. I love me some bluegill fishing, y'all. You better believe I do, especially when I'm getting on that size right there. Getting that bucket bluegill. I ain't keeping many today. I'm just gonna keep maybe 
maybe six or eight. But fish like that will make a nice size bait. There he is. I saw my line get tight on that one. I threw over there by that wood. He was just hanging out over there by it. Come on up here, you old bluegill. That's another just slab, man. That's another hoss right there. Come on up here, bluegill now. Don't break my line, neither. i tell you folks, two pound line, you get a bunch of bites on it, but you gotta be careful when you're handling these larger fish. Look at that, man. Look at that bluegill right there. I mean, just tall, thick, nice bluegill, man. Nice bluegill. There we go. I'll tell you what on this one, y'all. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna stick him here on my board and just see. I just wanna see how big he is. I bet you he's eight inches or more. Oh yeah. Look at that right there, folks. That bluegill there, he's almost nine inches. I mean, that's a dang good bluegill, especially for public water. Let's let him go. Go home, bluegill. Go, go make babies with your good genes because I want more bluegill like that. You know, I know a lot of a lot of places got ponds and stuff that are stocked and they grow some big bluegill and whatnot, but when you fish in public water, at least out here anyway, seven, eight inches is a good bluegill. Anything beyond that is real good. I rarely get one that's, you know, in that 10 inch range. Oh, I got hit. That's another one just a pulling, man. Right over here by this wood. Oh man, that's a that's another nice size bluegill right here, y'all. Nice size bluegill. Man, that's a dang good one. Come here, bluegill. Holy cow, look at this, man. Oh, he's tail smacking me too. Let me get this hook out of this one, y'all. Look at that, man. Take a look at this fish right here, guys. Look at his head. He ain't got no hair on his head. He's done went plumb bald. Look at that fish. He's a big one. But he's done, he's done went bald on us. I'll tell you a fun fact, though. Two out of every three men experience hair loss in their life. Two out of three men. That is a crazy statistic. But thankfully, if you're one of the men out there who is experiencing hair loss, Keeps has you covered. And it just so happens Keeps is today's video sponsor. They make hair products that allow you to keep your current hair and regrow new hair. And it's a very simple process. You go to keeps.com slash kite catfish. That's my link. That'll get you 50% off your first order. Go on there, you fill out a questionnaire a doctor will review your case and provide a individual care plan to suit your needs. Then products just show up to your house. You don't have to go to a pharmacy. You don't have to go to a doctor's office and be evaluated. Everything is done online. Simple, easy. Keeps.com slash kite catfish. I'll have the link down in the video description, but very simple process and I am super thankful to have them sponsoring today's video and helping me keep the lights on on this channel. So big thanks to Keeps. Y'all check them out. Something's tapping me right here. They tapping me. I got him. I don't know if I'm gonna land him, but I got him. Oh, that's crappie. That's crappie right there. Oh yeah. Let's see if I can land this thing. I'm gonna put him on my measuring board. I don't know if he's gonna keep. He's gonna be close. I would love to throw him in the bucket. I wasn't sure I was going to land this one because I'm in a nasty tree over here. There's a lot of snags. You can kind of maybe see there on my screen all them branches and whatnot. You drop a jig down into that and you ain't necessarily going to get it back. But this fish bit and I did get it back. And so he will make a great flathead bait if... And this is a big if. If he will keep. 
them. They just stick him on the board. Let me wet that board. It's hot out here today. It's 80 degrees. This board's drying out quick. Please be 10 inches, crappie. Oh, ho, 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 yes. Look at that, folks. He's about 10 and a quarter. The guy be 10 inches to keep out here. And here in Tennessee, we catch a crappie on rod and reel that's of legal size. We can use them for catfish bait. So you're going to see him in an upcoming trip. If I can catch anything on him anyway. We're going to try. That's a pretty crappie though. He's got some dark colors, some bluish green on there. Heck yeah, man. Oh, I got another one. Oh, that's a nice crappie right there too. Oh, 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 oh nice crappie. Oh, look at him jump out of the water, man. Oh man, that is a dark color crappie. Come in here, buddy. I'm gonna try to land you. Oh man, another crappie, y'all, man. Beautiful too. Look at that. That is awesome, man, dark. I'm gonna stick this one on the board too. He may be coming with me also. I've got all the bluegill in there I'm gonna keep. Oh yeah. I'll spin it. Try not to lose it. Boy, if he flopped now, he's gone. That in there, 11 and a half inches. So uh, another quality keeper that's coming with me. What do you think about it, Mr. Crappie? You wanna you wanna come with me? He says, heck no, he don't. He does say hit the like and subscribe, Bo. He did say that. I heard him say that. I can translate crappie, not very well. I speak very little crappie, but the few words I know are like and subscribe. And I'm pretty sure I heard that in his speech then. I'm gonna make a few more casts right here, y'all. I'm, I'm gonna show you here. Let me grab the camera. I'm sitting on a tree. This is a, I don't know how good you can see with the sun and the glare. A tree, old tree, it's broke off here in the water. It's got all kinds of branches. Here's another tree that comes across it and there's just, it's snags. It's all snags in here. But if you don't get your jig snagged, there are some fish down in these branches and stuff. And that's two crappie here very quickly, both keeper size. So it's just, uh, again, you fish and cover like this, you better have Bought a, I brought a good supply of jig heads with you because you're going to be losing some. Oh, is it, oh, that's a fish. That's another one. That's another, oh, that's another real dark crappie. Real dark crappie. I thought I'd come across a branch right there and snag myself. That's another one, man. Dark is all get out. Come here, crappie. Hate to tell you, crappie, you coming with me too. Oh, he just broke me off. Oh, hey, this fish, he, he's, he's trying to flip out of the kayak now after he done stole my jig. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna try to forge my autograph on that jig and sell it on eBay. That's what this fish is going to do. He's trying to make a quick dollar. I got it back, old fish. You out of luck. That's another one, though. I guarantee you he'll keep. I gotta be careful, make sure he don't flop off a board because he's still wound. Yeah, he, he's 11 and a half inches also. Dark as all get out, man. Nice crappie, y'all. Nice crappie. I tell you folks, when you fishing with this gulp minnow, I'm gonna throw him here in my bucket too. He's gonna come, he's gonna be the last crappie I keep. But when you fishing a gulp minnow, you'll literally just, you catch everything and a ton of them. First cast out here today, smallmouth bass, then bluegill. Now on the crappie. I'll make, an, I'll make enough progress down through here today. Wouldn't be shocked if I run into some yellow bass or some white bass, maybe pick off a large mouth here and there. It's just, these gulp minnows are, I don't even know, I don't know where that, there it is. These gulp minnows, they represent what these fish are eating, which is small, minnows and out here shad is the primary forage species this is what they're eating this makes up the bulk of these fish's diet and it's a perfect representation of it it's just a we are representing an injured minnow an easy meal for these fish and they gobble it up and i'm having a dang good time y'all i'm having a dang good time so i'm gonna make some i'm gonna retie here make some more casts 
there's a lot of crappie here. I'm, I'm seeing a few like on the live scope, like right there was one that was kind of going in and out of the frame. There, there he was again. I'm not seeing like a ton of fish on the screen, but there are, like right there's one. They're, the fish that are here seem to be very tight to the individual branches on this. Like right down here, here's another one that's just kind of popped up. There's another one sitting on top of that branch. So it's, you know, they're there. There are some there. It's just a matter of, you know, you gotta sink your jig, here comes one along. You gotta sink your jig down into that mess. And if you don't get bit, well, you can say goodbye to that jig because you ain't getting it back. <laughs> I got another one. I got another one right there. I was skimming that thing right over the top of a branch and he snatched it. These fish are very tight, very tight to them branches, but they're there. That's, a, that's another just dang nice crappie, man. Dang nice crappie. This one's not gonna go in my bait bucket, but I may I may use this one. I may put him in the cooler possibly. Let's just stick him on the board. Yeah, he's over 12 inches. That there's over 12, y'all. Another just nice crappie, just nice slab. Love it, man. I'm gonna turn the camera. I'm gonna use that front mount here for a second. And I'm gonna make another cast over here and I'm just, I'm watching that line as it sinks and I'm gonna start reeling it. And you gotta be careful if you, if you let that jig hit them branches, sometimes it can feel like a, like a bite. But if you don't set the hook on it, if you don't jerk the rod into that branch, oftentimes you can pull through it without getting the hook in there and without losing it. And if you just kind of come across some branches with them crappie hugging tight to it, you can get you a bite. That's what's been happening on them others there. Uh, I caught me part of that branch then. I come across, I, I dragged that across the branch and had so much gunk on there, I couldn't even get a crappie to eat it. I wouldn't want to eat that either. They, these crappie, man, they got, they got fancy tastes. They're not going to eat a, a jig with gunk all over it these are the type of crappie here i mean they got their tuxedos on they're going to dinner parties they they are they're going places that serve hors d'oeuvres that's like a rich people word for appetizer you know if i go to zaxby's i like to get an appetizer get them fried mushrooms or whatever but there's a bass right here there's a little bass right here in front of me i see him you probably can't see him on camera he's right here but I was saying these, oh, I got in at then. See, I, set the, I was talking about them hors d'oeuvres and I got excited because I'm getting a little hungry and I just put this jig into the dang tree branch over here. I'm gonna break off because I don't want to go over there and get on top of it and spook all them fish. I'll grab me another one right here. I'll show you this right quick too. I added this same accessory on my old town kayak my pedal kayak last year but i put one on my hobie kayak here too this is just a magnet get that at the hardware store i've added it to my live scope mount and now i can just have me a handful of jig heads just sitting here waiting and ready to go that way i'm not getting in and out of a tackle box all day and i'll have these jig heads i'll be hauling this kayak down the road on a trailer you know them, them jig heads they don't blow off so i can just have them here trip after trip be ready to go so there's you a little there's you a little tip there diy cheap accessory that makes a, a huge difference on the kayak there, oh what's this that's another bass right here y'all one of them old large jaw his jaws ain't very large they will be someday won't they you gonna go get you ain't gonna get eaten by a flathead or a blue cat or anything else are you you gonna go get big and strong there he is that's another species though man like i said in the intro y'all i'm out here to catch whatever 
wants to bite. And ain't nothing gonna bite with my line wrapped all around my rod. Every time I talk, man, I get line wrapped around my rod tip. <laughs> but like I was saying, y'all, I'll come out here today just wanting to just wanting to relax, have some fun, catch a variety of fish, and you know, maybe score me some live baits for an, here's another one. And I've done all of that, you know. I, I've I've got a variety. Even this fish right here, it's a bluegill. And compared to some of the other bluegill I've got today, not very big. But on the ultralight, if this was as big a fish as I caught today, I'd have still had a blast out here. I'd have still had a dang good time. Yeah, y'all, fish like that, so much fun on this setup. And fish like that, I don't care where you're at in the country, what kind of water you fish, bluegill in that four, five, six inch range, prevalent. You know, a lot of places got perch or uh, white perch, either white perch or yellow perch. Bass are prominent all over the country. Crappie, you can have a good time with all those fish. And all it takes is an ultralight rod, some gulp minnows and jig heads. It's a simple setup. I think part of the reason, aside from the fact it's just so fun, one of the reasons I like it so much and why I'm so drawn to it is the simplicity of it. You can, I mean, I've got a kayak here rigged out to the max, all these toys on it, completely unnecessary for this style of fishing. You can go out and just have so much fun with minimal gear investment. It's, it's a, a really attractive option for those of you on a budget or those of you out there who just wanna keep things simple, just wanna keep things super simple and be able to catch fish and have a good time. Now I'll tell you, here's another one. Here's another one. Boy, he's a pulling too, man. He's a pulling. I'm just going to, I'm just letting him do his thing. You can feel every head shake down there with this thing. I don't know what this is yet. It's either a big bluegill. Oh, it is. It's a big bluegill. Big bluegill, man. It's another, it's another hoss right here man i'm here bluegill before you break me off now it's another just look at him man look at the i got that camera turned crooked but i want you to look at that thing man look how thick he is he's gonna try to prick me with them spines what he gonna do he's gonna stick it to me by gosh i stuck it to him with that hook he's gonna stick me with them spines but just awesome fish Awesome fish right here. All right, buddy, you ready to go home? You lucky I caught you when I did. You might have went in that bucket. Yeah, man. I'm having fun, y'all. This is a good time. Oh, he hit it. He hit it then. <laughs> oh, I'll come across a branch a couple seconds before. I thought I was in another one and it took off. <laughs> I'm working this down tree right here in front of me. That's a dang nice bluegill. Oh, these bluegill today have just been great quality. They're up in this wood on these trees and in the main channel here. Get out of here, bluegill. It's your lucky day. You're going home. You go home and kiss your mama tonight and tell her how lucky you are pull off here just a little bit and make another cast over there. Just let that jig just sink. Just let it fall down in them branches. And usually that's when you get bit, but if you don't, just start reeling it in real slow. Just swim that thing real slow. You can swim it just as is. You can twitch your rod tip. Don't twitch it into a dang tree branch down here. That's what I just did. Doggone it. Yeah, I broke off another one. But there's a variety of ways to fish that. It's a very versatile lure. Can be fished a bunch of different ways and they all catch fish. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do though here, y'all. I gotta retie again. This video 
it's probably running a little long with as many fish as I've caught. I've not been out here too terribly long, but it's just been, I've covered, I started at the edge of this pocket, went down into this little pocket here and have come out. That's as far as I've made it and have caught, I don't know, several bluegill, a few crappie, got that small mouth, got that tiny large mouth. I mean, it is just a awesome day out here, which is exactly what I wanted. But I've caught enough fish, even in this short of time, and me flapping my gums, like I am notorious for doing in these videos, this is probably running long. So I think I'm gonna just close out this video. I'm not gonna close out my fishing day. I'm gonna keep working my way down through here and just keep playing with whatever uh, wants to bite, but uh, I may get a little off camera time. And then I also got my, uh, my skipjack rods here with me too. I brought those just in case I stumbled into some skipjack while I was ultralight fishing. I'll be able to get me some fresh skipjack for the next catfishing trip. But once I'm, once I'm done ultralight fishing here, once it gets a little closer to dark, I am gonna target some skipjack and uh, do a little trolling here, see if I can get on some. That way I, I wanted some live baits for the next catfish trip, some you know bluegill or crappie, whatever I could get. And then I wanted some skipjack for cut bait too. So I'm gonna see if I can get on some of those also. But uh, anyway, guys, uh, thank you for watching, man. I appreciate you and supporting me and sitting through the advertisements and stuff so that I can keep coming out here and fishing as often as I can do, uh, often as I can and bringing you as many videos as I can. So thank you all so much for the support. We'll do it again soon. See you then.